So the gameplay is basically there. Right, so let's let's hit play and then see how this plays. Right, so I'm jumping, I'm jumping through these pipes, um, and that's basically we have most of it. Right, we might need to go back and sort of change some of the parameters, change some of the numbers. Um, but this is the basic game, right? Okay, now the only problem is uh, there's no game over. The game doesn't end, so let's, let's add that now. And it's fairly straightforward. It's a very difficult game, so whenever the player hits anything, it's game over, right? So, so that's easy. Let's add a new state to the player object, this little burden object. And we're going to add a global transition, and we want it to be collision enter. So basically, whenever this object hits anything, then it's going to be game over, right? It's going to go to this game over state. So let's try that. Let's just pay attention to the state machine down here. Play. Right, so flying, we're jumping, and we hit something. Right, all right, here we go. We hit something, and then it goes to the game over state. Right now, the state, this current, the game over state doesn't like do anything just yet. But um, this is what we can do here. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, or a couple of things we need to do. First, we want to stop all the obstacles from moving. Right? It doesn't make sense if they continue to move. And secondly, we want to show some sort of indication on the screen that the game is now over, like you have failed to pass the game. Right. So, so that's the second thing we want to do. Um, and then after that, we want to restart the level. So actually, let's do um, let's do the restarting of the level and the sort of indication of game over first. I think that's 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 a little bit easier to do. So let's do that first. So I'm just gonna do a simple camera trick. Let's go to camera and do camera fade out. Right. So. When we go to this state, we're going to fade the camera out to some random color. Let's just do a, do a purple. Actually, let's do slightly red. Okay. And uh, I think one second is probably enough, but let's say, let's do two seconds. And then after two seconds, we're going to go to the finish state. And it's going to go to the next state, which is restart level. And this is where we're going to restart level. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Let's give that a test. Hit something, and then it's game over. Right, and then you can see that the screen turning to a purple color. Now the problem is everything is still moving, right? The pipe is still moving and we want to stop the pipes from, from moving forward, right? So the way we want to do that is we're simply going to let this state send a global event, right? So let's go to state machine and we want to use the send event action right we want to send an event to other objects so that everyone else knows that it's game over right so event target let's go to let's just do broadcast all and exclude self it's not really necessary in this case but yeah why not and send event we need to define a global event that all the objects are gonna know, all these state machines are gonna understand, right? So let's go to events and uh, let's create a new event called game over and click on this ch 
checkbox here. So this is how you make an event, a global event. And you'll see this pop up that says global assets created. All right, so that's good. And come back to the state. Let's check the sent event selection here, and then let's go to game over. All right, so that's all you need to do. So basically when this state is run, it's going to send an event, send the game over event to every state machines in this scene. Right. Okay, so that's good. Now we want to go back to the obstacle prefab state machine. Right. And here we want what we want to do is we want to create a state that just just create this idle state and then we want to add a global transition global event game over so what this does is when the game over event is sent from the bird state machine regardless of where we are in the state which state we're in uh, it's gonna go back it's going to go to this idle state because of this game over event and we are just simply not going to do anything here so it will stop moving remember only when the object is in the move state when we do the translate and this is when the object is moving right so that should do the trick let's give that a test As you can see that when we have that, the obstacles will stop moving. Now there's a, a slight problem here where the only the obstacle that's in, that's currently in the scene will know to go to the game over state, right? Because that's when the event is called. On the the newer ones still being generated they're still moving so the next thing we want to do is to make sure that the generator stops generating new objects when it's game over so fairly similar let's go to the generator and we're just going to add an idle state and a game over event okay let's try that again can see that when it's game over the generator will stop generating new obstacles right so that's let's actually play this and right you can see that it's um whenever you hit something it will just stop moving and i'm gonna let the bird object continue to move um, just for the effect, I think it's kind of fun to see it sort of falling down instead of um, instead of just stopping it right away. Right? We kind of want to see it falling, so that's good. That's basically um, that's, I think that's basically the game. Um, now in the next section, we're gonna do a little bit of sort of cosmetic uh, improvements to the game, so it looks more like we're flying forward okay so now we're gonna try to make this little prototype a little bit prettier right so let's go to the main camera and first of all I want to change the background color to something a little bit nicer mmm I can't really decide how about this that's um that's let's have it Random, randomly pick a color right so let's go to playmaker create a finite state machine and uh, we're just gonna pick a random color right so set random color and let's go to variables and define a color variable I'm gonna call this background color and let's just give it five different colors. You know, five different colors that we're going to randomly select. Right. So here I'm just going to pick a few different colors. Mm. 
Mm, okay, maybe that one. Okay, and then we're going to store the color in background color. And after that, we're going to go to the camera category and set background color. And we're just going to use a new color. Okay, so uh, let's give that a try. Okay, so every time when the game restarts, I'm going to have a different background color. So that's kind of cool. Okay, and also I'm going to turn off the Playmaker GUI here. So uncheck the Draw Active State Labels. This will stop Playmaker from having those texts on your game objects in the game view. Right, so as you can see that they are no longer there. Before there was an idle text on this thing that we don't need that anymore. Okay, good. Um, Right, the next thing I want to do is the to do with the floor so so that I want to basically add a new texture on it and move that texture so that it looks like we're moving forward. Um, it will be obvious in a minute what I'm talking about. But let's first, let's see, let's first um, give the floor a new material. Right. And just drag the new material floor to the floor object right so now you can see that in the materials section we have floor um, we don't have any texture there yet but that's uh, let's set a different color so we kind of know where the floor is right so you can see that this is where the floor is I might actually make it a little bit bigger so we can see it better okay okay good now, um, I don't actually have any texture um, created, so let's just see what's available in, in the project. So these are all textures from Playmaker, really. Uh, let's just grab any random one, really. I think anything would do. Yeah, let's, let's just use this one. Right. Okay, now you can see that it doesn't look quite right, which is perfectly fine because that's how we've set it up. Right. It's not it's not a texture that was created for the floor. But um, in the tiling area, we're going to play around with the numbers a little bit so we can uh, make it the size that we want. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter just so we can actually see it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to... I think that's fine. Um, and the way we're going to move the texture from the right-hand side to the left-hand side is by tweaking the offset. Right, so if you type in any sort of whole number, you're gonna you're not gonna see any difference here, right? So the offset is how you can sort of change the position of the texture on the model on the 3D model. Um, but what you want to do here is pick a number between zero and one, and can see that I'm actually moving this you can see that the texture is being moved um, by the offset right, so what we want to do is basically keep changing that number so it looks like it's moving right and it looks like I'm actually going to decrease this number right so uh, and that's fairly fairly straightforward basically we will want to just continuously offset the material on the object on the y uh, sorry on the x axis for for the object for the for the material um, and you can do that fairly quickly by um, using our trusted playmaker again right so I want to 
continuously change the offset of the material sets. Go to material uh, set texture offset. Right, and uh, here I'm going to start create a new variable called x offset. Right, it's going to start as negative zero point negative zero point one, and uh, I'm going to offset x by that amount. I'm going to do it every frame, and also. I want to change that number so every time every frame when we do this calculation again in the state I'm going to uh, add negative 0.1 again to this offset so it continues to move it continues to change um, Actually, um, why don't we start with zero? Oh, I think that would just be a little bit easier to understand. And basically, this number is going to decide how fast this texture is going to move. Now, let's just um, let's turn off the generator so we actually let's turn off the bird so we don't you know we don't go into game over and um, play this, and you'll see how this works. Can see that the texture is moving now, right? Because if you go to the offset, you can see that it's being continuously changed based on this offset number here, right? Because we are changing the x offset variable by the frame and then applying that back to the texture offset. Now it might look like it's moving a bit too fast, so we can just Tweak this number. Obviously, you want to do this when um, when the game isn't running, so the change will be um, the change will be saved. But I'm just trying to find a good number to use here, something that looks okay. Um, I actually quite like it when it's fairly fast. It's so I'm gonna keep it at. Point zero, negative point zero. Uh, sorry, negative point one. Okay. Okay. Let's turn that player object back on, and uh, let's give it a play. Obviously, you, you kind of want the texture below to match the speed of the obstacles. So there are a lot of things that you can change and a lot of different variables you, you might want to tweak to make the game harder, easier, or uh, to make it look like it's going faster or slower. Um, for example, I think the generator is not generating these fast enough, so so it's not quite that challenging. So I'm going to change that to one second per pipe. And all of a sudden, it's, it's a lot harder. I think the yellow background doesn't work very well because my, the player is a white cube, so it's not very clear. But OK, so now the game is it's fairly challenging, right? just like the, the Flappy Bird game. So that's that's a very quick sort of way for you to build something similar to it. Um, obviously, it's lacking the um, score count. It's lacking some of the other features, and and definitely not um, as refined the gameplay. Um, and you know we we don't really have background image and the visual for the characters. But this is a prototype that that's working fairly well um, and then you can sort of tweak it um, from here on there so have fun